Hello, we are at Quaker House in Brussels to talk about the state of policing across Europe and especially with regards to the rights of people on the move. So, Andrew, can you tell me why QCA set out to um, put together this report on framing human policing? Sure. So we're, uh, there's a Quaker community that we're working here on behalf of, and many of those people are engaged in activities that are um, supporting um, people who have sought sanctuary in Europe in the last few years. And it's through those activities that they've heard personal testimony and in some cases seen uh, police violence. Surely um, police must be regulated, there must be standards, laws, and respecting that should be enough, right? So, I mean, as the organisation that represents Quakers here at the European level, we're particularly aware of um, standards and conventions that governments have signed up to, but uh, it's, it, it's much more political than that, in the sense that police services at the moment are under increasing pressure to um, perform a certain tough-on minorities, tough-on migrants form of um, policing. Uh, which works against what the real objectives of policing should be, which is public safety. Um, but it also means that um, some of the most vulnerable people in society are the ones which are least able to access the services that should be protecting them because they fear um, the, the consequences of doing that, of having their rights violated through contact with a public service, the police, which is actually working against them rather than um, in their interest. And um, of course, it's always not just about laws as well, because we have deep divisions within the structures of society that mean that some people are able to access their uh, human rights in law and in practice much more than others. So considering the picture you just painted, how things can be different? Well, I mean, there are lots of examples of positive practice by um, individual police officers. I mean, we've, uh, th you know, through our direct contact with people on the move, we've heard of cases where police officers have given small amounts of money to people. Um, another NGO told us about a particular case where uh, a police officer had to drive a group of people um, a very long distance to drop them on the other side of um, a, a border back the way they came as a form of um, what we call pushback um, and on the way he stopped off at a market in a town and walked around with them and bought them food in a very sort of uh, in a way which you know respected their humanity in a very dignified way but often uh, police officers doing this kind of thing are having to um, do so uh, you know, against political pressure, against local policy, um, and so take some um, risk in doing that. But of course, the other elements we need at a more political and social level, we need political leadership, which doesn't seek to um, gain popularity by uh, taking advantage um, of an already vulnerable group of people. And we need uh, bigger social change that deals with deep divisions in society, um, particularly around stereotypes, uh, racial prejudice and discrimination. Thank you, Andrew. For more information and to download a copy of Framing Human Policy, um, follow the link below. The report is available in Croatian, German, English and French.